Ever since I can remember, I've been playing football, lacrosse, basketball, baseball. I've always been small. I've never been the best athlete. I've always enjoyed the coaching aspect of it. More than the playing, I think I'm able to make more of an impact when I'm coaching. He's done everything I've ever asked him to do, and he loves it. Just football is in his blood. Coach, play the game. You let him know they're playing an FCA. Right, it's you got like him. You got him. You got family, him. then football. Let's go. Let's go. I am officially a manager, but the coaching staff has really embraced me. Realizing that I can do more than put out ads and give out water. You know, that's not Quinn. Quinn has his coaching gear on. He comes out to practice. He's an X's and O's guy. During practice, he'll move guys around. He'll even go down and help out with our sophomore team and our freshman team when we need it. My goal one day is to be either a collegiate or professional football coach. It is a privilege to be able to play this game number one. He is absolutely one of the coaches on my staff for sure. 48 minutes of everything you got. A lot of times your players aren't going to tell your coaches or your staff, I had a tough week in school, I'm having family problems, but Quinn is one of the kids. So they absolutely confide in him. You play for the Warriors. But at the same time, they show him the respect on the football field as any other coach. So it, he serves that dual purpose, which no coaching staff has but mine. I couldn't be a coach if the players didn't listen or the coaches wouldn't embrace me the way they have, which I'm very appreciative of. He'll start with a text to me, hey coach, what are we thinking about doing for next week? What's the game plan? We'll chat about it. He'll start looking into film that day on Sunday. Watching film, taking notes, seeing tendencies. He basically prepares all of their offensive plays for me. And then on Monday, he brings it to practice. He'll help our offensive coaches run the scout team. So he sets up all the offensive plays for us to cover on defense. He's also involved during the week in our film sessions. Quinn is a 50-year-old man inside a 16-year-old boy. He is just like having another coach on a staff. It's now game time. We gotta be buckled up, ready to go. As soon as that first whistle blows, that's it. When I was born, I was in the hospital for six months. I had esophageal atresia, and due to complications during repairment, I was diagnosed with paralyzed vocal cords. And my doctor says it's basically like I'm breathing out of a straw compared to the normal person. I've had two surgeries to laser open my vocal cords so that I can breathe. He's had his struggles when he was younger, never brings them up, never wants the attention. It's always about the team. It's just such a pleasure to have him around. It's difficult for me to project my voice, so that's a difficulty when it comes to coaching. I've kind of just lived with it. I don't know any different. The kids and the coaching staff, they don't really care about those things. If I know my stuff, who cares what my voice sounds like? Before the game, I make sure huddle is set up. I make sure the headsets are ready. I set up the TV on the sideline, which is attached to an iPad. So we have live replay during the game. And then I'm just going around. If someone needs a mouth guard, if someone needs help putting on a back plate, I just do whatever I can to help. I'll chart plays. I'll help with just watching a certain kid throughout the game, picking up different tendencies he has, or I'll watch it overall and pick up what they do on first down, second down. He's just a big sponge. He absorbs everything. He wants to know why we're we running this offense this week, why are we going to defend this way this week. And it's great to be around someone like that because it's an energy that you may not get from your other coaches. It's a breath of fresh air. I really do whatever I can to make Coach D'Annunzio or any of the other coaches' lives easier on game day. It's funny, you know, I, I, I say to my wife that, you know, I spend more time with Quinn than I do with you. He's always trying to pick my brain, and that is the key to being a really good coach. There's certainly an incredible atmosphere at Fujitani Field against a rival. When the band's there, the stadium's back, the tribe's here, and the kids just get mentally ready. There's really nothing like it. I can't compare it to anything. So today, our linebackers coach is away this week, and Coach D'Annunzio talked to me this week, and I will be calling 
the linebacker signals. It was kind of unexpected, but I'm very happy for the opportunity and I'm going to do my best. He's a very calm young man, even on the sideline. He is a A student, he's a 4.0 student. He is the president of his class. So he has so many things going on in the course of a day, a week, and a month, but he never misses football. How he does it, I don't know. During COVID, I decided to write a letter to Bill Belichick, and a few weeks later, letter came in the mail, one Patriot place, a letter from Bill Belichick responding. For him to take the time and respond was very kind of him. You know, it's funny because, uh, you know, everybody in the school thinks that Quinn could be the President of the United States. And I'm right there in that same boat. And at the same time, uh, his passion is coaching. There's no t how to become a football coach. There's no straight line to that position. There's no degree in college for NFL football coach or college football coach. A lot of it is trying to find connections and talking to colleges, professional teams, for internships. Yeah. I'm just trying to do whatever I can to someday be a coach like Nick Saban or Bill Belichick.